please make sure you mute yourself during the call. And if you have any questions or comments, please share them through the chat and um, we'll, we'll be sure to um, deal with those before the end of the meeting. Today, uh, we have our invocation to be given by Ken Baker, please. Okay. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have given us this day and every day. Thank you for Rotary and the wonderful way it allows us to serve our local and world communities. Bless Mary Pant and Governor Rich. Give them wisdom, courage, and strength to make decisions and to take actions that would be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ken. We need those in these times. And um, do we have John Barley with us to lead us in the pledge? You do. Hey, John. If you would face whatever it is we're facing and join with me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and on liberty. So help me God. Thank you, John. And our first agenda item today is a past president's moment in history with Kathy Cold. It's good to see you, Kathy. Good to see you too, everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, so it's a past president's minute, so I'm going to make it about a minute. <laughs> So, uh, I, of course, I was president in the 2016-2017 year, which was the 100th anniversary of the foundation and also the year that our own Marshall Butler was district governor. The theme for that year was Rotary Serving Humanity, and our club fulfilled that goal with various projects. Um, we had our usual dictionary project, we had the Salzbacher Center, we had the Salvation Army and the Blood Drives, and we had many others of our usual, but that was the year that with the great uh, chairmanship of Josh Harrison and our president, Mary Pat, that we launched our drowning prevention and water safety program and uh, for underprivileged children in conjunction with the YMCA. And we had a great lunch at the new facility to launch the program. And we had about, I think we had like about 150 people there, which included Rotarians and city officials and uh, it was really a really a, a nice moment for our club. And um, we also, um, thanks to Eric Sherman, who worked hard and to our club members who were devoted to the cause, um, in the 100th anniversary of the foundation, we also were a 100% Paul Harris Fellow Club. So we were really proud of that. And we also got the Premier Club Award at our district conference which was held in Atlanta that year right before the um, na uh, national convention so that was also a lot of fun uh, so our fundraising projects included both the swim project but also our 50th anniversary celebration for our club which was held on the club's 50th anniversary on June 16 2017 and thanks to the efforts of um, Marshall Butler, along with Sean Asmuth, we were honored to have John Germ, who was the chairman of Rotary International, as our speaker for um, that 50th anniversary year. And that, that evening was a lot of fun for everybody. We had a great turnout. I think we had close to a couple hundred people there. And um, we had uh, seven district governors, past, six past district governors, and then our own Marshall Butler. And then that was also a night in which Mr. Our own Mr. Gay received his 50th uh, um, perfect attendance award for 50 years. So that was really a, a special moment. Um, had a great time and um, really enjoyed serving you all that year. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Those are some um, pretty large pumps for me to have to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Continue to march in. It, it was all the help I had. <laughs> Thank you for presenting. Um, we, I, I guess I sort of rushed into the meeting and I didn't welcome everybody back and wished everybody a new year. I hope the holidays were restful 
and peaceful for everybody. Um, I'm going to have to ask you to bear with us again as we move into the new year with regard to our meeting planning and the COVID restrictions that we're facing. Um, we, we want to get back to live meetings every week. That's our goal. That's our hope. And that's what we're praying for. But um, it's we're just going to have to make the decision with our board on a month by month basis with the goal to keep our members as safe as possible. So for this month, what we're going to try to do, obviously today we're meeting by Zoom on January 13th and January 20th, we will meet at um, the Yacht Club. I mean, sorry, Timaquana our new home for now. <laughs> we're meeting at Timaquana. We ask you to RSVP in advance so that Patty can get the head count and we can have the meals ordered. We'll continue to broadcast the meetings via Zoom. And um, so that's January 13th and 20th will be in person. January 27th will be on Zoom. And before the end of the month, we'll publish the meeting schedule for next month for February. So if you will, please go into DocDB, reserve your slot if you're planning to attend in person. Um, at all of our activities and uh, schedules are available in DocDB. So I would uh, encourage you to jump in there and get registered if you're not. Um, do we have any other pop-ups? I know we had a very successful outing at the zoo and thank you to Patty and Dan for helping to get that organized. I think everybody had a really nice time. It was good to see so many people in person and not really get to hug anybody, but at least say hello. And um, it was wonderful to see so many families come together. Do we have any other pop-ups? Everybody's still recovering from the new year. It's so quiet, I can't even believe it. Uh, do we have Matt Hebner for a family of Rotary? Yes, you do. Hey, Matt. How are you? Good, thanks for being with us. I am happy to be here. Let's see, so we'll start off with uh, some upcoming uh, uh, birthdays. We have uh, Emily, um, I believe I was saying this right, I believe it's uh, uh, Mitchellman, and uh, Mickelman, and that's uh, gonna be on the 7th of January. We have Michael Fish, who's gonna be on the 9th of January, and Joseph Eberly, and he's gonna be on the 12th of January. And so we have, um, yes, I, I, I see from everyone that Matt looks like an Old West gunfighter. I, uh, my children said I look like a, a three musketeer. So we'll, uh, we, <laughs> yes, Matt or Tony Stark, not Tony Stark, I can't make this part grow. Uh, so, uh, at any rate, so we've got some birthdays coming up. Uh, best news I've heard all day is that uh, Michael Corgan Sr. got out of the rehab center and is back oh, home. Good. So that's, uh, that's, that's great news. Okay. I think everybody is, you know, happy about that. And um, so uh, not wanting to break with tradition, I thought I would tell you guys uh, a little bit about my life uh, as a, a geriatric parent. Um, I had a uh, recent thing. I, I, there's a word called serendipity. And uh, it's kind of like when everything happens the way it's supposed to, it causes you to believe in God. You know, it's like there must be a divine plan to put all of this together. I had the opposite experience the other day. Um, basically, uh, I woke up and uh, hopped in the shower. And when I'm getting out of the shower, I see my 20 month old now. It's hard to believe he's 20 months old, but uh, uh, he is standing there with the remote control of the television. And I can remember thinking at that time, that's probably not a good thing, but I, I was busy and in a hurry and trying to get out the door. And so I get home late that evening and sure enough, uh, the television remote is missing and we're looking everywhere for it. And after about an hour of looking, I gave up. I was like, okay, this is not going to be possible. And so I hopped on an app and uh, on my phone and contacted Comcast and, and uh, asked them to send me a new remote control. And so 
I'm sitting there and, uh, and uh, when I'm looking at the, at the app, I'm talking to a gentleman named Rajid and uh, he must have just taken a class on how to upsell people on, uh, on, on stuff at Comcast because um, he was trying to get me to add a landline and all other kinds of things and better internet and more channels. And uh, I'm trying to explain to him, I just need a remote sent to me. My child has misplaced the remote. And so as I, he says, well, can you get your, a copy of your, uh, um, your bill? And so I'm walking through the dining room and my blind, deaf, 15 year old incontinent uh, Jack Russell Terrier has left a landmine that I barefoot step in and, uh, and, and very quickly forgot all about the phone that was in my hand and, uh, you know, set that down on the dining room table as I'm yelling things, uh, basically intimating that my dog is about to have a shorter life than he was supposed to start with. My wife runs out with Clorox wipes. I run into the bathroom and find out that Comet does an excellent job of defoliating. Um, and, uh, and, at a, and then I realized that I had forgotten about that I was on the phone with the guy from India about my Comcast bill. <laughs> so I go back out and I now have a $320 per month Comcast bill. Uh, and an email saying, you know, hey, great, great news. We've got all your changes set up. And, uh, and so I go back and I spend the next hour getting back on with Comcast and getting them to cancel all of the changes that had just been made. And, uh, and finally being exhausted, having not been able to see anything on television, no news, no anything, I decide I'm gonna go to bed. I get up the next morning and I go to put my shoes on in a hurry because I'm running late. And uh, I find in one of my shoes, the uh, remote control that was missing. And uh, so now I'm also missing a toenail because of the remote control that was in my shoe and me being in something <laughs> hurry to get my foot in that shoe. And so, uh, so I don't know what the opposite to serendipity is. I actually tried to look it up and I didn't see anything that resembled this, but I do believe in evil and the presence of evil in this world. And I had that experience uh, just, just recently, two days ago. So I hope that my misfortunes can cause all of you to have something to chuckle at today. Oh, thank you, Matt. That was much needed. So at your expense, sorry about that, but that was pretty darn funny. <laughs> Um, we have our Sergeant at Arms with us, Dane Jensen, for some reporting. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Let me be the latest to wish you all a happy new year. Um, I'd like to start by welcoming a visiting Rotarian B4 from the South Jacks uh, Club. She's an assistant governor and here to um, <clears throat> introduce our district governor today, who's speaking. Um, Welcome, B. So beyond that, I just want to go ahead and touch base with everybody on our final for uh, fantasy football. Congratulations, Bob Kidd, who took the whole thing. Uh, Bob finished the season with a 10-3 and three record, so congratulations. <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to finish second, John Runyon third, Marshall Butler fourth, Brandon Hillard fifth, um, Gigi Carroll sixth, Dan Maloney, seventh, Bill Howie, eighth, Ike Sherlock, ninth, Kathy Cold, tenth, Mary Pat, President Mary Pat, you finished 11th, and, and Patty finished 12th. So I think we had a tremendous amount of fun. I hope that people will consider uh, playing with us next year. Maybe we can get even two different leagues up and running. Um, but in any event, uh, President Mary Pat, I will go ahead and send things back to you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Dane. Thank you for organizing that. It was the a first for our club and we weren't quite sure exactly what we were doing, but hopefully those that participated enjoyed it and we can grow it next year. Um, and with that, I would like to welcome B to the club today. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. So are we ready for our introduction? Yes, ma'am. All right. Very good. I am so happy to, to join you all today. It's always a pleasure to be at your meetings and it's definitely an honor to be able to introduce our district governor. I first met District Governor Rich in 2011 when I first joined Rotary. 
there was a medical vocational team that was visiting our district. And my husband and I hosted two of the nurses in our home that week. At a celebration dinner that was hosted by the Covingtons, I met Rich and his wife, Marie. As a new Rotarian, they set an inspiring example at that first meeting. They both live that service above self <laughs> rotary motto. Rich Turnbull lives and works in St. Augustine Beach and has been a resident of St. John's County for over 30 years. He's happily married to Marie, a Rotarian, has five adult children and worships at the Anastasia Baptist Church. Rich is president of the Turnbull Environmental and Environmental Consulting and Construction Company. Rich is a charter member of the Rotary Club of St. Augustine Beach and has been a Rotarian since 2003. Rich and Marie are members of the Paul Harris Society, the Bequest Society, major donors to the foundation. In 2017, Rich was honored by the Brent Williams Spirit of Rotary Award, District 6970's highest award. Welcome Rich, Mr. Governor Rich. Thank you all, thank you B. Um, thank You're you for welcome. being here. Um, I'm just delighted to be with this group again. Uh, I want you to know, uh, Marie and I wish we could be there all together in person and look forward to the day when that, that does happen again for us. Um, and I, I guess I just want to jump straight into the uh, to a presentation I have. If you all don't know it, um, Marie is really the, uh, the district governor in, in all but name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just a pretty face that goes with the title, and some people say I'm not very good at that part, but Maria is here to help help me through this um, every day, and um, she's also our district trainer this year, um, so really do appreciate that. Uh, do I have the share screen, Patty? I'll be glad to give that to you. Thank you. Sure. Okay. There you go. Mm, that one. <clears throat> uh, okay, have you guys got that? Yep, you should. There you go. <clears throat> so First of all, I want to get out of the way. That, you know, what is this uh, thing about the flamingos? And um, I know you all, for example, have, have saw my flamingo flyer. It came out yesterday. Everybody's read it, except Ike. He only counts wheels, apparently. But um, <laughs> uh, he was so close. Was, there's 30 wheels that we counted, and he he, he predicted 29. But um, keep trying, Ike. Um, but the, the, this whole story of the flamingos and what we've done is, is just really something we've had fun with is in Florida, all eight districts get together and plan the multi-district pets. And during that time, a couple of years ago, uh, Barry Rasson from the Bahamas was getting ready to become our Rotary National President. And they had a profile piece in the Rotarian Magazine with this cover photo. And he made a, a metaphor, a leadership metaphor out of the, the one flamingo that's going the opposite direction from the whole rest of the flock. Um, so our eight district governor nominees kind of adopted the bird as our symbol and, and our mascot. And as we grew and learned and met our fellow zone district governor uh, folks, it, it became a zone wide uh, mascot. And so now there's 31 uh, district governors along the eastern seaboard and all the way down the Caribbean to the South American countries um, calling ourselves flamingos and we're just having fun with it and we use it as a way to bond and um, you know uh, just encourage people uh, from a different point of view. Uh, B mentioned some of my journey and I, I just want to share with you um, why I do this. One of the um, what, I, what I, I'm going to do is just tell a story about myself a little bit, not that I'm that important, but I think it's important to tell stories about, and, and that's a, good, a really good way to connect with non-Rotarians and get them interested in Rotary 
is tell about Rotary from a personal standpoint. And I do that about myself. I do that about with Marie. I do it about the district. We tell a story. We, and we, you know, obviously, I want to talk about your club as well. But I think storytelling is such a great way to communicate with people um, and, and kind of give them a personal insights into why you're a Rotarian. So I'm going to demonstrate that. I became a Rotarian um, in 2005. I joined Rotary in 2003, but I really didn't um, experience what Rotary was until I went out to Mississippi and helped with Hurricane Katrina efforts. We were out there about 10 days with my company. My church supported it. Rotary Club supported it at the time. And uh, we ended up um, connecting with uh, the Rotary Club Placa had a, a kitchen um, set up in a small town called Moss Point. And um, yeah, <laughs> so uh, we stayed there about a week. Uh, they, they were there a total of three weeks and we fed a, a total 30,000 meals. And feeding these people two meals a day, lunch and dinner, and, and just really seeing these people in line and helping them and seeing all the help those support those coming in from Rotary and cross connections with Salvation Army really kind of opened my eyes to what Rotary was all about because before that I was getting ready to quit. And um, <clears throat> instead I've moved on to a charter, help charter the new club uh, in 2007 and became president in 2010, 2011. Uh, during Cindy Covington's year as district governor. Um, it is also that, that winter 2011 where Marie went to India uh, with Cindy on a National Immunization Day um, in her efforts to eradicate polio from that uh, country. At the time, there was still four countries in the world with polio. Um, I also was a, in that same time frame, a vocational training team leader to the to the Northern Caribbean Basin, the Bahamas, and Turks and Caicos. It was a really tough gig for me. Marie was uh, walking around for a couple of days in the slums, literally the slums of India, um, um, handing out vaccinations. And I was searching for conch fritters in, in the Caribbean Basin. So um, I, I hope I made it up to her. I brought her down for the 7020 uh, conference that year, and we had a blast. Um, and actually, um, strengthen our friendship with Brent Williams. He was the representative uh, for the president that year to that conference. But <clears throat> in particular, polio and uh, its, its commitment to Rotary, uh, or Rotary's commitment to ending polio was very near and dear to our heart. In the 1940s and 50s, the polio pandemic, uh, there was a surge then. And during that period, Marie's mom contracted the polio virus at the age of 19 or so and spent two years in a hospital. She was an up and coming actress and model, had a, a bright future in life ahead of her. Um, and in that time, the doctors told her she'd never be able to walk again and she would never have children. And obviously um, <clears throat> she ended up um, having at least one, we're easy here with me, uh, but she actually had five children and lived a, to a full life. But um, she passed away about five years ago, around the age of 85. But what, what took her, her and shortened her life was polio. She had post-polio syndrome at the end of her life that um, ultimately took her, her away from us. And, and it's one of the reasons we stay committed to uh, eradicating such a horrible disease that just stays with you forever. And we know the history of the vaccine and um, the Rotary Polio Eradication Initiative. Um, in 2014, it takes three years for a country to be, uh, with no cases to be declared polio free. So remember, Marie was there in 2011. I, I always say that Marie kicked polio's act, uh, excuse me, butt <laughs> <laughs> out, of, out of India. You don't want to mess with this woman. Don't get on the wrong side. Uh, and we're happy to report that uh, in this year, early summer, we uh, uh, declared polio, uh, Nigeria polio free, which meant the continent of Africa is polio free, leaving us with only the two countries in Pakistan and Afghanistan. And I don't know the exact numbers, but I think in 2019, there was about 185 to, or maybe a little over 200 polio cases in the world. This past year, 
we we're down to about 133. So we're getting it back down towards zero and that's the ultimate goal. <clears throat> I, I guess I, I did a similar thing and a couple of years ago when Panhandle went out after Hurricane Michael with my company and supplies and equipment. And it's just, I guess, become part of who I am. I, I, I am really attracted and have a passion for helping people after a disaster. And um, as I mentioned, it started in 2005 and it's continued during um, you know, these past 15 years. And of course, including this past year, which as I mentioned in my newsletter, which I'm sure everybody has read, right? Um, <laughs> um, it, it's just good to see 2020 in the rear view mirror, right? We, we, we don't need another year like that. Um, <clears throat> But as far as um, what we're doing as a district, Rotary International President Holger Kanak, who is from uh, Germany, the first German uh, to be a president of Rotary International, has asked for a few things. And, and one of them being that he wants each club to meet and do some strategic planning. And you know, I support this 100%. It's really very important that we ask not every day, you don't pick at it, but you know, once a year or so, come in and say, where do we want to be in five years? How can we be better at retaining our members? How can we better, you know, attract new members? And uh, you know, what what do we need to do to keep relevant? And that's the that's what a strategic planning initiative is all about. And there's resources online, both at the district level and at Rotary National level, for um, embarking on those kind of planning efforts. We have some Amer uh, uh, annual fund and uh, polio giving goals that are driven entirely by the clubs. Uh, this is a bottoms up organization. Each club <coughs> is hopefully support uh, enters in their in DACTB a goal um, for your uh, annual fund giving to the foundation as well as polio plus giving. And all we do at the district is roll that up. And, and try and take a stab at what we think it looks like. I, I'm conservatively dropped the numbers slightly just because we don't know how fundraising will be impacted in this you know, time of COVID, right? So we're hopeful that we can come close to our four-year average that you see there, um, but we're doing our best. And there's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts and pieces that are gonna impact this. Also, in terms of membership goals, Holger um, has absolutely zero numerical goals. He believes that every year that we, as an organization, have tried to, you know, establish a you know one percent or two percent growth number, we failed to achieve it. So he didn't want to set us up for failure, and rather, what he believes is organic growth and the importance of retention. And I echo that completely. I think we work so hard to get a new member in the door, and we need to figure out what gets them excited and what gets them passionate and help them understand and experience the value that Rotary provides, not just in terms of being a community service organization, but you know, it's leadership skills, for example, that, that, you, that apply to your work um, place, your home, your family, um, your church, um, and in your community. So, really important to work on the retention, engage and involve all members. Uh, we had our, what we are now calling our vibrant club seminar this past fall, because that's what we want. We want to engage members and in vibrant, successful clubs. <clears throat> I have some disaster relief goals, um, go figure. Um, you know, the world needs Rotary now more than ever. I think we'll be involved at some levels of the COVID-19 vaccination rollout. Um, and I think there's a lot of Rotarians that would welcome that. Uh, but one of the goals and things I learned when I went out to the Panhandle, um, spent 10 days out there taking trees off of roofs and whatnot is we were fortunate to meet up with a different organization. It was a uh, Gulf Coast Conservation Corps um, group that had their own trailer, a couple of trailers and supplies and tarps. So we, we we had equipment. They had manpower and some you know chainsaw extra uh, chainsaws and that 
So we work together well. So what we're doing now is we're, we're outfitting here in the district, two trailers um, and building a team um, and supplies that will enable us to respond and assist quickly to our neighboring districts should a, another emergency or disaster occur. Um, and there's opportunities for getting involved in this. There's opportunities for personal reward. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I guess maybe I'm uh, hooked on it, but it uh, doesn't mean you have to go out uh, boots on the ground. We're, there's help needed in communications, logistics, coordination, uh, right from your own home or office. And those opportunities are, are readily available. Pat Mulvihill is our chairman for the Disaster Relief Committee and he's our current president at um, uh, North Jacksonville Club, which is, meets at the zoo. And um, he would welcome a call if you're interested or I'm happy to field a call and tell you. I, I gave this talk to the Placa Club back in uh, September or October. Um, and uh, I got a call within an hour after the end of the meeting from the general manager of Lowe's who was in that Rotary Club. And he said, we'd like to help you with your supplies. Do you have a list? And we had hadn't gotten that. We had the list, but we hadn't done anything about it. And sent them the list within a day or two. Uh, we had $6,500 worth of supplies and materials uh, delivered to us. And um, it only cost us $5,000 because Lowe's donated $1,000 and they gave an additional $500 in discount. discount. So um, it's, 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 we're picking up the trailer tomorrow, the second trailer. And we're going to start um, outfitting it with shelves and and having the supplies ready. And just one final note: it doesn't mean we always have to be the ones going out there. We can loan this this trailer with equipment to a to a district that needs it. If we can't, if it's sometimes it's just too far away, but we can meet them halfway with all these supplies and materials and help them out, and then just get it back in three or four weeks when they're done. <clears throat> so. One of the things that district governors like to do is talk about, you know, the club that you're visiting and I'm no exception. You guys have been here since uh, 1967. We heard of the stories um, getting, uh, hitting their 50 year mark. Congratulations. Um, you know, it's a, it's a fairly large club that's full of uh, outstanding leaders at the club and district level and beyond um, zone leadership as well. And, um, you guys clearly are a strong supporter of uh, an polio now campaign. I suspect uh, one or more of your people have ex have family members that have been impacted by polio. That's what drives our giving at our club. It's just a natural. Um, but you're also involved in you know all the acts, right? The rotor acts, interacts, the early acts, um, youth exchange, a, a big supporters of our youth programs and consistently awarded Rotary Citation um, and district recognition. <clears throat> Incredibly giving club. Um, and we, we went through uh, and found this information, actually Marie did, um, but approaching a million dollars in all time giving. Now that's to the foundation. And so I don't know how much more you guys give to the community that doesn't get tracked, it might be twice as much as this number for all we know. But um, you know, you give a lot to the foundation, you give a lot to your community. <clears throat> and, and you do a lot of things within the community as well. You're a very active club. Uh, the baseball grounds, fields of dreams, um, the food pantry, the community health, uh, the road cleanups. And by the way, I would, Marie and I would still, Mary Pat, if you ever get back on the Cedar River cleanup, we want to be a part of it if we can. <laughs> um, and, and of course, recent activities of COVID related. And I guess, you know, I'm, I'm speaking the choir, right? Why am I telling you this story that you already know? You guys live this every day. And, 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 and there's a couple of reasons. One is we, we, we don't want our Rotarians to think that what you do doesn't go unrecognized. Um, 
it is appreciated is known how well you guys are integrated and um, committed to community effort, uh, helping people that are, are less fortunate uh, throughout the community and throughout the world. But there's also people within a mile of you right now, I, I would guess at two miles at, at most that you have helped in some way, you have helped feed them, you have helped house them, you have helped uh, you know, the needy and the hopeless and the homeless. And you have helped these people in some cases, maybe even saved a life uh, by the works that you do. And I'm here to thank you because they can't thank you. Um, you may never get a chance to meet them, but I'm here to thank you for that work and for that, that um, compassionate caring that is part of the uh, West Jacksonville Club. So thank, thank you guys very much. It, it does not go unnoticed. It is not unappreciated. You're making a difference in people's lives. More Mingo stuff. Um, we have a very simple Mingo bingo card that Marie has created. It does the math for you. You just got to grab it off the district website. Uh, we stole this concept from uh, past district governor Marshall, but it's not really stealing if it's a good idea. It's just you know building on something that Marshall started, very similar to his all-star theme uh, during his year. And it's basically just a, a, a way to uh, in trying to incre increase engagement um, by looking at some rotary activities and working a list. And we're trying to provide some incentive to that. And a couple of the things are going to have a really nice polo shirt. That we're a, not wearing. Yeah, we, <laughs> we happen to have our end polo shirts on now, but and we didn't mean to match either. But um, we have nice pink. Uh, flamingo shirts. We've got a flamingo tattoo on it. And um, uh, we're developing a flamingo pin, pin that looks very similar to what's on the screen. And guys, if you, you know, if you're a little um, not, not into wearing pink, we're going to have some rotary blue uh, polo shirts available as well. So we want everybody to participate. Um, there's some, some real easy things you can do to get points. You know, we're trying to get to 25 points. It's I think Marie's at 60 right now, so uh, <laughs> she's a little bit of an overachiever, but um, you, you kind of get the idea, and it's all honor system. This is not a competition. We are um, trying to encourage people It's you know to just get additional exposure to all things rotary. Uh, in addition to the shirts and the pins, we're all, what we usually don't do in rotary is incentivize people with money, but um, we have been having many of these larger district meetings and we want to give that money that's been collected in dues in the last couple of years. We have some uh, <clears throat> extra money uh, back out into the district. So we're doing that with uh, some cash and Paul Harris points that Marie and I are donating. Um, everybody's name that hits that threshold, again, it's not a competition. We're just going to have a drawing for the top three. Um, and if you know, we get enough activity uh, entries, maybe maybe we can increase this list. Uh, but just a way to, again, get members engaged, particularly newer members, perhaps, uh, that uh, don't, uh, you know, Rotary is a big, large, complex organization, um, but we can help gain understanding through this program. Hope uh, the presidents uh, encourage participation in this. Uh, and we just, I talked to my club just before I got on here and suggested, um, you know, have a workshop, you know, work together as a group on this call one day. If you you don't have a speaker, you, you know, part of your club assembly or something, it'd be a good way to work uh, the, the Mingo Bingo card and, and help people, um, you know, reach that 25 point or better goal. Um, and Rich and or I would be happy to attend and help facilitate that. Exactly. <clears throat> There's some upcoming opportunities we want to make you aware of. Uh, this actually originated, I believe, in 6960, this Infinite Possibilities Seminar Series. It's online. Here's the dates for the round, second round. The first round was uh, Women in Rotary. It's a wonderful um, seminar. So speaker talks for about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, and question and answer period. Um, the last one of last year uh, celebrated um, the first woman in Rotary International to be their president. Jennifer Jones was the, uh, the, the speaker and uh, just had a great call. Um, these are some great topics, timely in the world we live in. 
Um, and you get uh, Mingo Bingo Award points for it as well. So um, the Women in Rotary series is online uh, as recordings. You can go backwards and um, take take a look at some of these opportunities to to um, attend this series. It's a uh, it's really great programs. Uh, locally here in the district, again, Marie and, and Coop are heading up the pets training. Uh, pets one is ongoing. Next week is the final round of a couple online meetings to get your president elects um, ready for the large session, which is February and March virtual. Um, you're normally handled in or held in Orlando, uh, will be online. Uh, there are Rotary Leadership Institute sessions online, and I believe locally our, our uh, uh, Mickey Ulmer is our chair in the district. He's working to put together one here in our district or a couple of them uh, this first half of this year. Um, not too early to start thinking about district grants. Uh, the deadline is due April 30th. And I always encourage clubs to work with other clubs in their area. Uh, you have a, a, a lot more bang for your buck and the committee that the rates and evaluates and um, assigns matching funds to your your grants looks very favorably on clubs or applications that have three or more clubs participating you get a lot many more points that way um, <clears throat> and i really do thank you i again would love to be there in person i know how you are everybody feels that way um, if you have any questions i'm Happy to entertain them. And if I don't know them, I'll ask Marshall or Ken to fill in for me or Marie. <laughs> and, or Patty. Uh, or Patty. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't have questions, I, I, I would love to hear how you guys are doing. Thank you, Rich. I did have um, one question to um, ask, actually two, I guess. Um, one of our members, Rahul Sharma, has been working with another club on a hopeful, um, international project in the future. So um, you had mentioned the district grant deadline. Do you know what the international deadline looks like? There are no, there are no deadlines for uh, uh, global grants. Um, okay. They can be applied for any time of the year. Okay. Um, um, so uh, yeah, and I, I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure that's true. And uh, Jeanette Loftus is our district grant. Uh, our district um, foundation chair. And she has a host of people that are working with her. And I believe our is our global grant chair. So if you had questions directly of him, he, he's, I mean, you know, he's, he knows a ton of stuff about uh, all things foundation and Rotary for that matter. Okay, thank you. And then can you share with our members just um, what's going on sort of in the rest of the district in the zone with regard to the COVID protocols and the, the meeting scheduling? And um, you know, I feel like we're probably doing the same thing that everybody else is. We're sort of in a holding pattern, but you know, I, I'm sure I speak for our membership. Everybody wants to be back together and uh, just looking for some direction from Right. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, right before Christmas, I sent an email, which I rarely do to the entire um, district, um, all members, not just the presidents. Um, and and basically it says, you know, the district is not going to mandate individual club, thou shalt do this or thou shalt not do that. We are uh, relying on the club president with their board to make the decisions, smart decisions, informed decisions. Uh, for your club, and um, and I place a high value on science, on um, um, federal, state, and local health guidelines and health officials uh, for making that decision. Um, as far as the district, believe it or not, Mary Pat, um, not every president like you uh, reaches out to me every week and tells me what you're doing each week. <laughs> um, so. I don't know from week to week how clubs are doing. I know what my little club is doing. I know a handful of clubs. Most of, I would say that we all tried at some point coming back to a live meeting or at least having hybrid meetings. Virtually all clubs have tried that. And in the last month, 
six weeks, we were all kind of moving back to Zoom only meetings. And I think my personal opinion informed um, is it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Uh, we're entering into the colder time of the year. Uh, you know, it's just more constrained. We have the highest travel days um, of 2020 occurred over the Christmas period. So, um, you know, it's great to see your family, but it just um, creates opportunities to get infected. Um, and uh, just, you know, the cold winter season, you know, promotes, obviously we're all familiar with the flu cycle. Is that gonna happen with the COVID cycle as well, in my opinion? I think up and down the zone, uh, other districts, there's there's some holdouts, you know, there's some clubs that are insisting on meeting and they're meeting and they're meeting successfully. Um, uh, the ones that are trying to be, you know, trying to be real careful. I'm visiting club tomorrow morning, uh, Bartram Trail. Uh, they're only allowing 10 people, a maximum of 10 people in their, in their meeting space. Everything else will be on Zoom. Um, so Marie and I chose to, to go to that, um, but we're being really careful just individually to set an example as leaders. Um, you know, I, I, we just had a grandchild born last month and we want to see it grow up, you know, you know? so uh, we're being careful. And I'm, you know, I could talk for a while about that. I'm not sure that helped much or not, Mary Beth. No, I just wanted everybody to get an idea of what's going on in the rest of the, the district and make sure we're following protocol and keeping our folks safe. Well, and the, you know, just to inform, I mean, the Orlando, the pets for Orlando was been canceled, uh, went to virtual. <clears throat> uh, International Assembly, which was scheduled to be in Orlando instead of San Diego this year, has gone virtual. Uh, they have not made a decision about um, international convention in Taipei in June. I noticed they have over 32,000 registrations right now, which is, you know, they were shooting for 40 as their goal. But I expect the decision will be coming out within weeks of, you know, what they're going to do there. Um, obviously, we didn't have it last year in Hawaii. Um, so I think, you know, you. Oh, I didn't <laughs> notice that. Yeah. <laughs> It's the only reason I took this job, you know, I was supposed to go to Hawaii. Boy, that one, I just missed that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's just something we're going to deal with. We haven't made a decision about our district conference in, in uh, May. May, but, uh, you know, it's 50-50 that we'll have to either have it virtual or push it to the fall uh, in some and have some kind of celebration in the fall. I can tell you... Coop and I have talked about training assembly. We're going to be virtual on that. So definitely we're going to do a virtual training assembly. Which is what we did last year in April, which I think, you know, was well received. We had over 300 people participate in the, in the online training. So, um, I, you know, I, I, I want to be encouraging this. This is going to end. We're going to see this uh, virus in our rear, rear, rear view mirrors like we're seeing 2020. Um, it, we just have to, you know, be a look, continue to be patient, continue to fight, continue to be smart. Um, the vaccine rollout is going to happen, and we're going to get, you know, this in our rear view mirror in, in the next few months. It's just going to take a while. Um, and I think Rotary is going to, you know, we're people of action. We're still doing service projects. We're still finding a way to raise money uh, for good in the communities and in our world. And you know we're 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 adapting, we're shifting, we're you know we're doing things online, and um, you know just trying to find new and creative ways that honestly is what we wanted to be doing anyway to attract new and different members of the society. Is you know give people options to how can they join our meeting without spending two hours you know traveling downtown, having lunch, and you know I mean that there, there's a lot of people out there that that's not. Uh, enticing to them. They want to be hands-on or doing, you know, doing something else. So this is, these are kind of opportunities for us to figure out what can work really well and, and move forward with growing rotary. Um, so uh, maybe a little Pollyannish, but I, I think it's, uh, it's good to see, you know, see some optimistic um, benefits to what, where we're at right now. Thank you, Rich. Does that 
Anybody else have questions? We can open up the mic. I didn't see anything in chat. Let me ask you, how are you guys doing? How, I mean, you, you're going to have a, a, a hybrid meeting next week. Um, how's the club doing overall projects and um, fundraising and just the meetings and at membership? We've fortunately been able to add a few members um, through this. You know, we had a couple members take a break and they're starting to come back again. Um, so we're very encouraged, you know, where we are. We've, we've changed the whole way we do business. Everything has changed our projects. We had to come up with some new projects and some new opportunities to to meet and socialize and, um, you know, it's month by month. Yeah. But I, I'm looking forward to this year, the new year, and with Ike coming in, we're, we have been planning for his year since I, I took um, office. So we're looking forward to the transition to his year and um, Eric beyond that. We're trying to, attack it as a team so that we have a flawless transition and we continue the momentum. Well, I, I don't say this lightly and I don't say it often. You guys are, you know, one of the best uh, solid clubs in the district. Uh, just um, have always been an inspiration and always been, for, you know, producing leaders, whatever you guys are doing there, you've been doing it right for a long time. Uh, because you're a very successful club and you should be uh, proud of that and um, know that we appreciate it at the district level. It's, it's nice to have that. I've got clubs calling me because they've got a, a you know, there, there's some cancer in their, in their clubs that, uh, and it's, it's tough to deal with those kind of things. And I'm, I'm glad you guys are so successful, seriously. We're blessed with our membership. I think um, this year, one of the changes we've made is the past president's minute that you saw in the beginning with Kathy. And um, that's given our club some real perspective on all the accomplishments. And um, it's, it scares the hell out of me every time I, <laughs> I hear one <laughs> because they, they all have accomplished so much in their years, but it really speaks to the devotion of the membership and um, the, uh, the devotion to service above self. And um, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be here and I appreciate our club um, and, and their, their hard work because it's really the past members who are teaching us as newbies how to carry it forward. Yeah, well, despite Marshall being there, you guys continue. In <laughs> well, our wardrobe is questionable, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Marshall teed that up for me. <laughs> I, he will never let me live down. Once I was in a finance committee meeting after his year, and I said, yeah, even Marshall's uh, uh, had a surplus for his year. <laughs> and I didn't mean it ugly, but it came out like it was ugly. <laughs> It was a compliment because he had he had district conference in Atlanta and it, and still was managed to uh, maintain budget and all that. Um, he's a good friend. I'm teasing him, of course. <laughs> well, that that's actually a perfect segue because um, Marshall will close our meeting today with a four way test. And um, I just wanted to thank y'all for being with us and for all the work you're doing on the district level. Thank you, Mary Patton. Uh, thank you, District Governor Rich and Marie for your comments and your dedication and leadership to our district. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, now this time, please everyone join me in reciting the four-way test of the things that we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? Is it the truth? truth. Second, is it fair to all concern? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Marshall. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. Our speaker next week will be Meredith Smith from the Community Health Outreach.
Um, many of us volunteered over there and we hope to have um, some more opportunities with them in the new year. Um, as a reminder, it will be an in-person meeting, so please RSVP. And thank you for being with us today. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.